Ford goes electric, but why? Hello, it's Elizabeth from the Homework Guide team. If you missed the big guys, stay tuned to our community page for updates on Kevin's recovery. Your outpouring of prayers and support has been tremendous and appreciated. Today's menu includes Ford's new focus on electric vehicles and why Ford is making this push. It's bigger than you think. Remember, you can use the cool new chapters feature below to fast forward to exactly the car news you're looking for. Let's roll. Ford has announced that it's all in on EVs. CEO Jim Farley signed a deal with investors for $11.4 billion, and this will create 11,000 jobs building EVs and batteries in Tennessee and Kentucky, dubbing it the Blue Oval City. The governor of Tennessee, Bill Lee, <laughs> sorry, Bill Lee has even committed to building a trade school at Blue Oval City to train these new specialized workers. Great. So from a job creation standpoint, it all sounds good so far. Farley has only been CEO of Ford since last year, and he has tripled Ford's spending on electrification and forged major partnerships for battery production right here in the USA. His goal is to be 40 to 50% electric by 2030 and force other manufacturers to follow suit. Ford's previous attempts at electric vehicles like the Focus Electric and C-Max Hybrid were not that successful. But now the 2022 Mustang Mach-E is on sale. There are four models available. Starting MSRP is $42,895 for the select model, not including the $7,500 federal tax credit, which is more or less a government mail-in rebate, making the actual cost only $35,395. Select's range is 230 miles, it's a rear-wheel drive, and goes 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. Next up is the California Route 1. Starting MSRP is $50,400 before the tax credit, this rear-wheel drive vehicle has an extended range of 305 miles. It does take 6.1 seconds to get 0 to 60. Premium starts at 47,600 before credit, 300 mile range, 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. The top dog, the 2022 Mustang Mach-E GT, can achieve 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Range is still 270 miles, and it features 480 horsepower and a torque of 600. The onboard technology for new Fords is called SYNC 4A, a proprietary Ford system found in the new F-150s, Mustang Mach-E's, Broncos, and the Lincoln Nautilus. And that's at least somewhat comforting. Ford is keeping it in the family instead of outsourcing to other big global tech. Coming next year is the F-150 Lightning Ford's electric truck, which already has 150,000 reservations. They claim this truck will still be tough, powerful, and productive, with lower scheduled maintenance costs. There are some cool features here that can make you an instant expert at driving a truck and trailer. First is the Pro Trailer Hitch Assist. All the driver does is hold down a button and control the gears. The truck, using an advanced backup camera and display, will control the steering, throttle, and braking to align the hitch ball and trailer coupler. The driver is even alerted if the coupler isn't the right height. But you do still have to jump out your door to hook it up yourself. Aww. There are onboard scales to automatically detect the payload weight, and you can zero the scale out and get a reading on just the weight you have loaded. Smart Hitch measures the tongue weight of the connected trailer and alerts you if you need to redistribute the contents of your trailer for a smoother ride. Pro Trailer Backup Assist even helps you back up your trailer like a pro. You just turn the knob in the direction you want to go instead of turning your head over your shoulder and Trailer Reverse Guidance shows the trailer on the large display screen so you can park more easily. I have to admit that I would kind of like this feature, but it's just because I'm a girl and someone else is always driving the trailer for me. Honestly, I just don't get enough practice. Some of these features sound like you wouldn't even need a buddy to ride shotgun anymore, you know, to hop out and ground guide you as you back up your trailer and hook it all up. So it's not a do-it-yourself, but it's a do-it-by-yourself. Come on, you seasoned truck and trailer drivers, comment below. Would you enjoy these extra features, or is it just fluff for these young pups and girls like me who need help with trailering? Now, full disclosure, I live in a state where most women actually drive trucks and trailers, and they're dang good at it. So all you cowgirls out there, you rock. Now, in case you're wondering who Ford CEO Jim Farley gets all of his ideas from, and why Ford is headed where it's headed with electrification, you need to know who sits next to him on the Commission of the Future of Mobility. The co-chair of this group, Mary Nichols, is the former chair of the California Air Resources Board, a position she held since 2007. In an interview with Automotive News, Nichols states that she is thrilled that the idea of battery and fuel cell powered vehicles has become an accepted reality in the U.S., a huge change from just a few years ago. 
The Commission on the Future of Mobility works to inform policy that prioritizes people and the environment on a global scale. Because in her words, they're in the process of inventing all of this in response to the climate crisis, and it is a crisis. Yeah. <laughs> in her humble opinion, the auto industry and the environmental community want a national mandate to force this electric conversion in the U.S. The biggest challenge to all of this is the infrastructure to support electric charging stations. Not to mention, in my humble opinion, what to do when a whole city's power grid just shuts down unexpectedly. How do you get home from a charging station that you were counting on without a charge? How can you run your life hoping and relying on, well, the government to ensure you'll have the power you need to drive where you want and when you want to? Why don't we just cut to the chase and make cars solar powered and self-charging? At least that would invoke the American spirit of independence and self-reliance. Well, as it stands, I'm not convinced that electrification has anything to do with what's best for the people. Comment below if you're picking up what I'm laying down, homework guy viewers. One more thought. In closing, Mary Nichols states that the auto industry is so slow to change. The investment decisions behind today's new vehicles were made five or more years ago. She states that even if Congress was taken over by oil producing states that wanted to roll back this electric platform trend, I think they'd have a hard time doing it. They could probably slow things down, but I don't think the movement could be stopped. Interesting how these self-inflated policymakers always seem so confident in themselves and their mission. You see, she states directly that EVs aren't about consumers at all. It's about the movement, the cause, not making your life better, easier, safer, or less costly. Sure, the features in Ford's new vehicles look great and they seem user-friendly, but that's not the overall focus of the commission. Hmm. Comment below if you've got something to say about electric vehicles and the future of the auto industry. As always on the Homework Guy channel, only constructive conversations will be published, so keep it classy. All right, if you appreciate the candid conversation in our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment on our videos and share them with your family and friends. Comments really matter. They help boost the searchability of our videos and lead others to great Homework Guy content too. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we love to do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. As Kevin always says, you guys rock. I'm the amazing Elizabeth. Gotta go.